Look at that light. Oh my God. So we decided to drive around a little bit uh, today. Uh, it's the second day here in Switzerland. And my wife just said, oh, that's a beautiful waterfall here. So this credits go to my wife. And look at these clouds floating by this waterfall here in the back. And it just looks like this waterfall is falling into the clouds. It's just amazing. And every now and then, a couple of trees pop out of this, uh, yeah, layer of cloud rolling next to the mountain. So it makes uh, yeah, some really nice shots over here. At least, I hope they are nice. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna drive around here today, hope uh, to see some shots. And every now and then I'm just stopping next to the road and trying to shoot uh, something like this. So we just stopped next to this beautiful lake. We tried to drive up this mountain, but the road was closed due to a snowfall. And uh, there was no light there, so I didn't take any pictures. But we drove back down and we came across this beautiful crystal blue lake over here. And what, what interests me immediately, uh, you know, I can try to shoot wide angles with this beautiful blue lake. But what, what I like is the way those clouds are rolling down those mountains on the other side of the lake. And it's just so incredible to pick out details. So I've put on the big telephoto, the 100 to 400, and I'm just picking out details in this landscape, watching where the light is falling on these clouds and just creating uh, yeah, some incredible shots here. And I really hope these shots work because this, this is why I wanted to come to Switzerland. This is just yeah, absolutely phenomenal. So uh, yeah, I really like that. So we're going to drive around this lake on the other side and just see if we can find some more uh, nice spots. There's a beautiful church on this side also. And uh, yeah, absolutely loving this. So it should be raining the whole day and the sky is turning blue right now. We have some beautiful sunshine. Can't be happier than this. So uh, a beautiful start to a first day in Switzerland.
know, like I just told you, <laughs> when I drive somewhere and I just see something that catches my eye, then I know that that is the shot. And uh, I just found one of those spots. I was just driving by here and I saw this road going up. So immediately parked my car, walked up here and I found this beautiful viewpoint over here. So let me show you on the other side what I'm looking at. And just a minute ago, those rocks, that's the that mountain on the back there with the snow on it, it was catching its beautiful last light of the day. So uh, I quickly took a couple of shots and then I discovered these, f oh, let's put you down a little bit, a little bit more. There are a couple of flowers here. Uh, let's see, see the white one over here and some pink ones over there. And I just thought that might be a nice foreground. So I composed a shot now with the seven to 14 millimeter. So I'm at nine millimeter right now, I think. I just framed in those flowers, this road down there going backwards and then this shoreline going to the back towards those beautiful mountains. The only thing I'm not quite sure of is this road. It's a little bit to the side, so I don't know. But the minute I composed it, the light is gone. So I'm just hoping the light is before a cloud because it's still half an hour before sunset. And yeah, I'm just hoping that the light is gonna return. But even without the light, the composition is pretty nice. So uh, yeah, let me show you on the back what I, uh, what I framed up at the moment. So this is the shot. You can see a little bit of rock here in the corner, this pink flower, the white flower, the road leading to the background, the shore leading towards that background. Yeah, some beautiful uh, contrasty sky there. And it just looks like this. So I think a really nice shot, the only one this evening. So uh, wasn't that lucky, I guess. But there is some light appearing again on that mountain. So <laughs> I'm just gonna wait. Who knows, yesterday I was standing on that shore down there where those boats are. And the minute I thought I'm going back home, I noticed this beautiful open glow on this mountain. So I'm actually hoping for that. So uh, yeah, I think it's worth, uh, worth taking a shot here, staying up here for a couple of minutes. So I often get the question why I don't plan my trips. And there are actually a couple of reasons for it. So the, the first one, I'm just keeping my eye on this mountain because there is some light coming. So uh, <laughs> fingers crossed. But the first reason is uh, often when I go and plan something, I, I search for something online and when I go there in reality, it's always a bit disappointing. You never get those conditions that you see online with those epic shots. So uh, that's the first reason. And the second reason why I don't do it, uh, it's because we're all taking the same images and uh, I just don't like that. And if I look at today, this morning, I just drove around with my drove around with my wife and kids, and I took some really nice pictures. And those images, those are mine. These have my uh, signature on them. I found them. I didn't look at them online. And the feeling that I get from from those images is just amazing. So uh, yeah, I'm just really uh, really excited uh, about the images this morning. I haven't seen them yet. Uh, you have right now so I hope these ones work so this is the last image of this day and uh, yeah hopefully there are much more to come uh, during this trip so uh, I'm quickly going back behind the camera because I can see some red spots appearing on this mountain and hopefully this is going to push through and we will have some lovely lovely alpine glow like I've seen uh, yesterday I don't know why, but on location I only took landscape orientated shot like this one. But when I got back home, I started playing around with this photo and I came up with this portrait orientated shot that is much better with less distracting things in it. At least that's my opinion. So please let me know in the comments which one of those two you prefer. I just found another great spot. I was just up there and uh, I just rushed up this stairs behind me to get to this viewpoint, uh, to the highest point. And I just didn't look down here, but 
if you look here, there's a beautiful S-curved road down a rocky hill with a nice panoramic view on the left. Some nice trees down here. And there's no light here, but for what I have in mind, it's not a problem. So I'm just gonna wait here until it gets a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna wait until some cars are driving by. That's not a really busy road, but every now and then a car comes by and I'm just hoping I can catch those tail lights going by here with a pretty long exposure. So uh, right now I compose the scene with a 10 second exposure. So I just hope some cars will uh, pass, pass by uh, in that time. So this is what it looks like. You can see the road curving to the back there. And if those tail lights, especially those red tail lights, they work uh, pretty good, I think. So uh, yeah, just waiting here for the right time. I can hear some thunder appearing. So uh, I hope that's not gonna push through, but uh, just waiting, hoping for some cars. So the kids are in their beds, uh, there's about two hours left of, uh, of daylight and uh, yeah, my wife uh, allowed me for the third time in a row <laughs> to go out tonight. So uh, she's absolutely fine with it, so we're really happy with that. So I've got a place in mind to go to this evening and uh, hopefully that will, uh, will suit out fine. Uh, this afternoon I wanted to take some more pictures. We took a car train, uh, drove past the, uh, the Mont Blanc area. But uh, yeah, the kids were so tired, so uh, we decided to <laughs> drive on back home and uh, yeah, we put them into the holiday home. So right now they're sleeping and I'm heading off for a great location. So yesterday I told you that I <laughs> don't plan my trips. Well, I did plan this one, so I have to be honest. So uh, this is maybe the most photographed thing in the whole of Switzerland, uh, the most touristic thing. And I just needed to shoot it. But when I, uh, my friend Moises uh, that I met a couple, about a month ago in Amsterdam, he told me about this place and I did some research and I saw these beautiful blue sky images with beautiful light on waterfalls and I thought, how can you shoot this thing just a little bit different? So right now I'm in Lauterbrunnen. Uh, yeah, an amazing, amazing place. And just look behind me here. Waterfalls, churches, this path leading towards the church. So it's so damn awesome. So uh, yeah, really good. So. What I did, I just waited the whole week for this day. It's an hour before sunset, maybe half an hour. And uh, conditions are grim, it's raining, it's misty. There are clouds and uh, yeah, the background there where these great snowed mountains are, they are completely blurred off by the, the foggy atmosphere. And I just like it, I just like it. So uh, yeah, I'm really happy with this shot. And uh, yeah, let me show you the composition that I have uh, at the moment. So this is the composition. You can see I've put the waterfall on the right side, the church in the center. On the left side, there's a waterfall coming down also. And this path is leading towards the church in the background. And I just made sure that this house on the left bottom here was completely visible. And the only thing I'm really bothered about is this, these white poles here on the right side. Someone put them to mark their uh, territory or to prevent the photographers from uh, standing in it. But I think it's an easy fix in uh, Photoshop. So I think I'll uh, clone these out. I'm not sure yet, but uh, yeah, this is just an amazing, amazing place. Thank you. 
So there's still half an hour of daylight left. So I'm gonna see if there's something else to shoot here. I don't know. But this place is just phenomenal. So I did find another great shot here and I found myself in the weirdest position. Just look at this, I'm just underneath this house. It's raining cats and dogs out here. So uh, I'm just hiding for the rain down here. And I just looked at this waterfall from down here and there's just an amazing tree underneath this waterfall. So I'm focusing on the lower part of it and then it looks like the water is falling on this tree. And it just looks amazing so let me show you on the back of the camera yeah. so this is the shot that i've composed you can see this dead tree over here on the left side and then this waterfall flowing down across the frame and it's just a tiny piece but yeah it's just something different you know i haven't seen any picture of this uh, waterfall so uh, yeah it's just nice and I'm, what i'm gonna try to do and i've never did that before I'm going to try to shoot a vertical panorama. So I'm taking horizontal shots and stitching them together going up so you have this huge waterfall falling down. never shot a vertical panorama before so I'm, I was thinking to myself how am I going to solve this problem of keeping the shot steady so what I did I put the camera uh, water level and then I just put one tripod leg to the back here and what I did I just took the same shot and then every time opened the tripod lowered the back one closed it took the next shot and then that way I just kept the camera in exactly the same uh, position it's just a tripod moving backwards so I hope this is gonna work. So if it did, then uh, this is the shot. I got back to the place that I scouted out uh, yesterday. There's a lot of bugs here, so sorry for that. And I'm in my shorts here, so uh, I'm getting bitten all over, but no problem. But look behind me, it's still the same uh, scene. And the sun is just peeking over the hill back there. So I'm just taking a lot of exposures here. I was just on time, so I, uh, and I'm using the uh, exposure composition here. So I found my composition set everything to manual and then I'm just putting exposure down until minus five so I have uh, images for the normal the foreground and images for uh, the sky and I can blend those together in Lightroom and then I will get this one massive image with a beautiful sky and a beautiful uh, uh, foreground so the light is now gone on the wine fields in front of me here and just a minute ago the last light hit this wine fields and I think I was just in time 
So this is the composition, it's the same as yesterday. You can see those flowers in the foreground, these suppressed trees running to the background where that house is. And then, yeah, a couple of uh, olive trees. And then the sun, uh, yeah, setting just above this hill. And I would have hoped that the sun would, would have set a little bit more to the left side here. But I used photo pills and it said it was there, but it isn't. So the app isn't as accurate as I would hope it would, be, would have been. But yeah, I just like, uh, like this shot. Happy with it. And what I expected yesterday just happened. You can see the sun just set over there and everything in this valley is in the shade. So there's nothing more to shoot here. And just a minute ago, I looked at the scene behind me yesterday and I thought it wasn't that int interesting, but there was a beautiful play of light and shadow and the light was on these wine fields below here. So I've got a shot going downwards here that I actually really like. So uh, yeah, pretty happy with this shot and uh, I think this is done. So uh, <laughs> I'm getting back in the car and uh, yeah, let's see if I can find something else, but I think that this is going to be the end of uh, this evening. Because it's too far driving to catch a little more sunlight, but we will see. light is really starting to kick off now and you can see behind me everybody gets nervous that is here there are so many people here i think there are let me count for a second here there are at least 40 other people here and the worst of it is that there's a wedding shoot down there and i i got that they are taking the best spots so uh, i just decided to leave the sky off don't know why i just it just felt felt better or something but there are so many people that i probably have to clone out of this shot and uh, especially there's a woman in a yellow jacket down there and every time she stands up for her picture <laughs> she comes into my frame so stay down well, so let me show you what i'm uh, what i'm shooting at the moment so this is the frame you can see those trees coming in from the side in an S-curve and just this beautiful light coming up from the top. That's actually why I left off the sun because the sun is so bright and it's straight into the sun so you get a lot of flare. So I'm just keeping it just out of the frame and just taking the shot. And I think this is the last shot that I'm going to take and then I'm going to search for another place because it's so crowded here. It's just amazing. So taking this one and hopefully it's going to work out. So I just found another composition just on the exact same spot, just a little bit to the right. So let me show you again. You can see that I used this hill here, this light, to make a sort of a line into the background there. And in the foreground here, there are some beautiful waves in this uh, hill. So it is gorgeous. So there should if you think what am i hearing there are a lot of drones here there are signs all over the place not to use drones but people just ignore them i think there are five drones at the moment so uh, yeah but i'm taking this shot something totally different than everyone else is doing and i just walked down there before those sh the shots that you've just seen and i took some shots in that direction 
with some red flowers in front and those suppressed trees in the bottom and then this landscape with some side lights. So hopefully these worked out, but there were so many people there that I didn't, uh, didn't film it. But I will show you these uh, images uh, after this also. So I finally found a good spot, but there are still two people in the frame. So the rest, everybody moved out, but there are just two people right in front here. And I can tell you, they are not going to move. So I think they belong to the wedding uh, couple down there. They are walking down the street between those trees. But uh, yeah, they are in a good spot, so I'm sure I can clone these out. Wouldn't be much of a problem. So I've bracketed every shot that I took here, so just to be sure that uh, everything will be fine. Right now the sun is getting behind a cloud, so I have to wait for a couple of seconds for it to come back down again. And then hopefully I can get this shot. And I only have to clone out these two people if everyone sticks to where they are right now. just walking down the trail from over there back to this parking lot where my car's parked down here and I just looked on the horizon there in the far far distance and there's just one single tree on top of a hill in front of a beautiful red sunset so let me show you what it looks like I'm making a little bit of silhouette uh, shot here so I'm gonna try to show you so this is the shot and I'm taking one vertical and one horizontal one and there's just this beautiful glow and beautiful atmosphere in the sky so yeah i'm really happy with this shot it's zoomed all the way out to 400 millimeter so uh yeah pretty happy with this one 10 second timer on this focal length always a necessary thing but uh yeah i think it's just uh, an amazing scene
So for some mysterious reason that I still don't understand, my uh, microphone wasn't working in the next clip you're gonna see. So you can see I climbed all the way up to this rock with this little tree. And it's actually the same tree that I saw when I shot the last image when I was up there behind me on that ridge. So um, yeah, I climbed all the way down here. It's a real sketchy path. And I think some people must have been down here because it looks like there is some sort of trail uh, towards this point. But uh, yeah, I'm actually on a rock. Uh, the, the sides are really uh, steep down. And I don't know, it's not, it's not dangerous because it's all very stable, but uh, it's a really small point to sit on. It's just one by two meters. And I just found this epic composition. And this must have been one of the best locations I've been for a sunset ever. So I'm gonna use this ultra wide angle seven millimeter lens here to shoot this composition. And this is the shot that I'm gonna frame up. So you can see I've positioned this tree here with the island on the right side and it just looks beautiful. And you can still see this side light coming in and um, hopefully I can enhance that a little bit in post processing. But uh, it's just seconds before the sun is going down at this point and it's the last light <laughs> of the day. So I'm here right on time and I'm quickly gonna shoot the, this image. So I was thinking, what can I do here? Do something different <laughs> with the remaining light that I have. So uh, uh, I decided to take a shot where I smoothened out this, this water. So I have to wait until the wind is clearing because I don't want the leaves of this tree to move. But right now I'm using the live ND filter of my camera and I've put it on, let's have a look. It's at the ND32 because this lens can't fit any uh, ND filters because of the, the ball shape on front. But uh, yeah, of course you can buy an adapter and all that stuff, but I'm just using the technology in this camera. It's just amazing. So let me show you on the back the composition that I framed up here. So this is the shot you can see. I've used all these rocks to lead to the top there with this island on the right. Some beautiful light coming in from the right side there. The only problem is this is the only position that I can get my tripod in to take this frame. And you can see on the bottom here, that my knee is in so I have to push myself in the most strange position to take this shot but <laughs> I don't care I'm just gonna take it so there's no wind now so I'm gonna push the shutter and I think uh, it's about a 10 second timer at the moment and hopefully that will smoothen this water enough so I have to watch out with my hand because <laughs> this lens is so wide I can easily put my hand in the frame so uh, hopefully this is gonna work so if it did here's the shot So this is the composition that I finally uh, found. There's just a little bit of foreground here. And I made sure that those trees are separated from one another. There's one little branch over here and one over here that connect those trees. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but the worst thing is this tree 
over here. I want that out of the frame and it's actually pretty difficult. So even with the 7 to 14 lens, it's very difficult. So this is the end result that I framed up. And I'm just going to bracket these shots, uh, taking seven or eight shots of them, different exposures, uh, to make sure I get the most of this background there and then this beautiful foreground over here. So I hope to find one of these beautiful purple flowers that's, that's down here, but I, uh, I can't frame it up nice with, uh, with the sky and the foreground and without these disturbing elements on the side here. So I'm going to stick to this frame and I'm going to look around for a different one. So uh, still keeping my eye out on that side and especially for this storm here because it looks like the storm is might even be coming a little bit closer to me. So if that happens, then I'm out of here, that's for sure. But uh, right now I'm just enjoying this little late night trip. Oh my god. You have to see this. So look at this shot. This is just amazing. So I really really like this shot. So I hope this is going to work because I have to try put the tripod up as high as possible with the 100 to 400 almost all the way out. But the light is amazing. So let me show you on the back what I'm looking at. So what happened? The sun just came through that gap in the back there and creating this beautiful atmosphere on this mountain range in the back there. So sorry, getting a little bit excited here, but <laughs> let me show you this shot. So this is the shot that I framed up. You can see this a church on the top of this hill being in the light and then those trees in the foreground these hills disappearing in the background and this beautiful side light just illuminating everything so this is just a magical shot so i hope this is going to work on this this distance because it's very far away but if it works this is going to be a good one so definitely a 10 second timer on this shot and yeah, just focusing on that church, F8, and then the rest of the frame should be all in focus. And uh, yeah, let's hope it works.
area is just so nice. I just found a really nice composition. So let me try to show you. I'm just using this beautiful yellow flower here in my foreground. So, so this is my composition. You can see I've framed up this bush in the center and I'm going to focus on this bush. There's no need to focus tag because, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, these, these trees are disappearing in the background. So they, they don't have to be sharp. They just, this is what it is. And the only thing I don't like, it's difficult to see right now, but in the top corner here is a little bush. So what I'm gonna try to do, so I'm gonna use a 10 second timer, and then I'm gonna try to grab this bush and pull it as much to the side as I can. So not breaking anything, just pushing it a little bit out of the frame. And hopefully my hands won't be in it. And I think uh, this will be a really nice shot. The structure of these, these rocks here, this flower. Yeah, probably a nice shot. And look at this behind me. This might be a nice composition here with those, with those trees here. <laughs> you see, sometimes filming yourself gives you creative ideas. So let's take this one and then look behind. So I did look behind me, like I said, on that last shot, and I'm looking at a beautiful scene here with those trees, a path leading in the front, and you have these beautiful yellow flowers that I just photographed here in the foreground. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna take a timer here, and I'm gonna try to position myself right between those trees here. Might look like a nice uh, special thing, and I think it might end up as a 16 by 9, I'm not sure yet. So uh, there is some light coming through this, this moment and the fog is starting to clear a little bit. So <laughs> I'm gonna run around here like a headless chicken probably, but I don't care, it's stunning. What a morning, what a morning. <laughs> I drove the car a little bit further down the road and I have this beautiful view on this little lighthouse in the back there and just a minute ago it's already gone there was a beautiful little layer of light on that lighthouse and it just looked amazing so I took a couple of shots with this uh, orange pink glow on the horizon with the light on this lighthouse and that little 
island in front of it and I just hope to get only the lighthouse but I don't think that's gonna happen but I'm quickly gonna drive a little bit further hopefully I can get on uh, water level and then shoot that lighthouse the light is gone but maybe when the light goes on in the lighthouse with this pink glow it will still be an epic shot but I'm already very happy with this one so uh, yeah, let me try to show you what I'm looking at I'll just put it up here on the left side of me right here you can see in the bottom of the island with the lighthouse then beautiful glow in the sky and this dark cloud rolling in on top so I hope this is gonna work out so just a minute ago when I was standing here a fox just walked by here so I was hoping to catch that one but I think it's gone now so happy with the shots today until now something totally different that I didn't shot already uh, during this holiday so uh, yeah, let's hope these work and quickly gonna continue before all of the light is, uh, light is gone. the light is kicking off behind me in the sky at the moment and I was just driving on this road looking for a viewpoint on this lighthouse and I just saw a parking lot put the car in and there were a lot of people uh, looking over there but there was this beautiful view of a, a red cliff with a boat in the water and this beautiful glow that you're seeing behind me at the moment that was over the bay so quickly got out of the car took that shot and the problem here is you can see this is all private property here so there's all walls and doors so there's no lookout point to that little lighthouse in the water it's quite a shame actually so I decided uh, to leave the car in that parking lot and just walk along this road for a little bit and hopefully there is a little viewpoint through these gates or over these gates <laughs> on that little lighthouse so I noticed there was a little bridge over here so that's what I'm uh, walking to and in the meantime I'm gonna show you that image that I just took on, the, on that parking lot back there So just next to this little bridge I found this staircase here leading down to this very small little beach but this is no one's property you can just go here uh, anytime and the lights on that lighthouse just went on so uh, I'm actually pretty happy here I'm just hoping to frame up a really minimalistic shot here so uh, <laughs> let's see if this is gonna work so let me show you the composition that I just uh, found here and it's very minimalistic and 
Look at this bay here with this piece of wood here. There would have been some nice compositions here if there was just a little bit of light. And I just wish that I was here when this beautiful light was on the lighthouse with this pink sky. But it isn't, so I'm only taking a blue image with this lighthouse. So there's a bat flying by. Did you see it? There's a little cave here, so I think they uh, <laughs> it's their uh, resting place. Yeah, it's flying into that cave again. Nice. Really nice. So <laughs> let me show you uh, uh, what I'm framing up at the moment. So this is the frame that I'm shooting. It's very simple, a lot of blue, just this lighthouse. And I don't know if I'm gonna crop it or leave it like this, or maybe it doesn't work out at all. I have no idea. But I just like doing something different here for, for once. And uh, yeah, just taking a bit of a long exposure. I think it's a two second, three second shot. And I just have to time it correct because the light on the lighthouse isn't on. Yeah, constantly. So it flashes a couple of times, then it goes back off. So I've just counted the flashes, pushed it with a five second timer, and then hopefully this light will be on in the picture. And I'm also taking one of the light off, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that would be nice too. So uh, I think the last shot of the day for now. So uh, I'm gonna get back up there. So with that last shot, I'm gonna end uh, today's video and probably this will also be the end of my European road trip. Uh, Switzerland, Italy, uh, Monaco, France, and tomorrow we are gonna pack the car and drive back home to the Netherlands. So I'm not expecting any unexpected stops uh, on the way. So uh, yeah, this is probably the end. I really enjoyed it. I hope you liked uh, these videos. I haven't seen anything of it, you know. I've been busy for uh, making new material, recording new material, busy with the family. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I haven't had much time to, uh, to sit behind the laptop. And I think I edited the first two days of Switzerland. So that's uh, almost three weeks ago now. And uh, yeah, I just hope <laughs> you've seen it all and you liked it. So please leave a comment underneath this video and uh, what you think of these videos or what you think of this video. And uh, yeah, I just really hope uh, you liked it. So thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget, push the thumbs up button and the subscribe button underneath this video. Uh, there's also a little notification bell. If you push it and select all, you will get a message when I release uh, my next video. So for now, really thanks for watching. Uh, I really appreciate all your comments and your likes and everything. Uh, you're really massively helping this channel to grow. So thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, I hope to be doing uh, stuff like this a little more in the future, but I'm actually really excited to go back to the Netherlands. Uh, yeah, three weeks on the road on uh, locations that I don't know anything about. It's just, uh, uh, really difficult and really tiring so I'm actually pretty exhausted uh, looking forward to going back to my own bed and uh, yeah looking forward to those really early Dutch mornings so for now from the south of France bye bye <laughs>